Hello, everybody. Baron Bananas back again. And obviously today we're going to do some more Katawa Shoujo. I'm just going to preface this right now. I'm going to go... I'm going to try to shoot for two hours, but... You know, I have bitrate issues with some things, depending on how many people are in the house, so... My stream will go till either two hours or whenever my bitrate decides to go to absolute crap. So, whichever comes first. <laughs> so, I'm just going to preface that right now. This will go for as long as the internet holds out. Which, at least at this point, I'm expecting it. Yeah. I'm expecting it this time, so I shouldn't get as upset. Anyway. So, when we last played Kadawa yesterday, we continued a little more into uh, Act 3 of Hanako's Road. We, we kind of just briefly talked with our classmate, uh, Miki, at the trace, uh, racetrack. Just, you know, speaking. Kind of thinking about things, not worrying. Kind of got from her perspective that she doesn't really kind of worry about many things. Because she doesn't want to, just things aren't really that big of a deal. So yeah, that was something. We went into town with Lily to buy birthday gifts for Hanako, because her birthday is coming up. After spending the whole day walking around, we went to an antique shop and got her a old chess set and a doll. Unfortunately, this was something we wanted to keep a uh, secret from Hanako until probably maybe the day of. But good old Misha and Shizune kind of ruined that. They kind of uh, forced us into a corner to spill the beans. And because of that, Hanako had a panic attack in the middle of class and just was shutting down. So, yeah, we just dropped her off at the nurse's office, went back to class, but the teacher said, you know, you've probably been through a lot today, so I'm going to let you just have the rest of the day off. Just grab your stuff and go. Just, just go, okay? You kind of went through a lot helping a friend. Which is nice of him. He also kind of told us this school isn't set up just, you know, to cater to disabled people. It's to set uh, it's to set all these people up with opportunities that norm that going through normal education wouldn't let them have. Just so they could actually go into society like a quote unquote quote normal person. To give them the same opportunities anyone else would have, just in a very slightly modified setting. So, for people like in Hanako's case, if she needs time to just be away from everyone and everything, if even if it's the middle of a lecture, they let her get up and leave. Because that's just something she needs. She needs time and space. Like, if we had trouble uh, breathing because our heart starts to act up, the teacher's not going to say, no, sit there and deal with it. He's going to say, go. Do what you got to do. No questions asked. They're going to cater to the individual needs, but still provide them every opportunity. So yeah, we're now, uh, this is right after we've been just been sent, uh, basically home, quote-unquote, for the day, since then we live on the school grounds. So we're going to be back in our, uh, dorm room. This is literally right after Hanako had her, uh, panic attack, too, so... Yeah, she's, as from what I recall, she is still uh, sleeping in the nurse's office after, you know, finally coming out of her, uh, out of a catatonic state of just sitting there, barely moving, looking terrified, and just no reaction, just, yeah. It was not pretty. She was shutting down in the middle of class, and when everyone figured something was wrong, they were all looking at her, which obviously didn't help. Anyway, let's continue on with that cheery note. I lay on my bed, trying to collect my thoughts. 
After Hanako's panic attack, I found myself fundamentally reassessing the relationship we share and what I know about her. I had a hard enough time dealing with four months in the hospital. One look at her scars tells me she was in for she was in one for a lot longer than I was. Be that as it may, I know next to nothing about her past. She has told me about the house fire, but only in the most basic way. And what of her family? I still haven't asked Lily about them. There hasn't been a good opportunity to bring it up. I don't know where she grew up or what her old school was like. Nor nor of her past friends, her wishes and ambitions. Not even her taste in music, food, and movies. All the little things that I knew about all my old friends. Just what have I been doing for all this time I've been with her and Lily? In the distance, I hear the bell signaling the end of classes. With any luck, Lily will soon realize that neither Hanako nor I are around and return to the dormitories. My mobile phone starts ringing, cutting my thinking short. It startles me as I've rarely been called since coming to Yamaku. Hello? Hasao Nakai speaking. Oh, Hisao. I'm glad I found you. You weren't at any of our usual places, so I thought that this would be the fastest way to contact you. I probably should have guessed it would be Lily, as she's one of the few people I've given my number to. Even through the phone, her voice sounds slightly on edge. I... Hanako and I left class early. She had some kind of panic attack. The line goes silent. If it weren't for the background static, I would have thought Lily had hung up on me. I'm just gonna check something very, very quickly. Make sure I'm not talking to nobody. Yep, yeah, I'm good. Awesome. I understand. Could you come by my room? I'd like to talk with you. Sure. I'd... I'd appreciate the chance to talk... to have a bit of a talk, actually. Good. Good. I... also have some bad news. I think we should discuss this in person. It's hard to grasp the seriousness of the situation from Lily's tone. She sounds so calm most of the time, but that could be a good or a bad thing, depending on how you look at it. Okay, I'll be right there. I collect Hanako's school things from my desk and head straight for Lily's room. I wrap my knuckles on her door and she soon calls me in. Lily sits at the table inside her room, looking a little worse for wear. And I guess that's because of the bad news. Following her gesture of invitation, I sit across from her and lay Hanko's things on the table. Well, there's no point in either of us waiting. Would you mind going first to Sao? What happened today? My memory of the incident is already beginning to fade but I explained it as best I can to Lily. Inviting Hanako to work with the group, Shizune and Misha's questioning, our foray to town getting discovered, and the subsequent panic attack. I add Shizune's reaction almost as an afterthought, but Lily seems to take some kind of comfort in hearing about it. I guess rivals don't become rivals for no reason. There must be some history there, but now isn't the time to explore it. I see. She had said her therap therapist sessions were helping, but I had my doubts. It's quite a shame. Her birthday has caused problems before, 
but I had hoped that she would have improved with you around, and the more intensive therapy. Where is Hanako now? Last time I saw her, she was in the infirmary. I guess she's gone back to her room by now. She wasn't in the library or the tea room when I checked, so I can only assume that too. You said you also had some bad news. What's the matter? Does it concern Hanako? Lily shifts her position. The body's way of saying she's searching for the right words. Oh, well, here it is. My aunt has fallen gravely ill. I'm afraid I'll be heading back to Scotland to visit her, and to spend some time with my family. What? Is she alright? When do you leave? I'm not altogether sure exactly how she's faring at the moment, though last I heard, she was stable. I'll be leaving Saturday. It's the earliest flight I could get. Stable. That's code for needs to stay in the hospital. I've been stable long enough to know that, and to know that doesn't necessarily mean someone is in good condition, but merely treading on water. On the upside, stable is much better than critical condition. At least she's not on the brink of death. Stable. That's a relief. Yes, but this means I won't be here for Hanako's birthday. <coughs> oh, sorry about that. I wanted to tell you now so we could think of something before we told Hanako. But after today's events, I'm not even sure if this... If there's going to be an issue if we simply cancel the party. I... don't think that's such a good idea. Hanako already knows that we're planning a party now. To go back on that seems like the wrong thing to do. Also, we should do something for your going away, right? You make it sound as if I won't be coming back. If all goes well, I should only be away for a week, though possibly two. Oh, that hurts. You make it sound as if I won't be coming back. Yeah, Lily, you're, you're gonna come back after two weeks. Yeah, you, you'll, you'll, you'll come back after two weeks. Then, like, maybe a few weeks later, you're gonna leave forever. So remember, guys, that's still a thing that's gonna happen, no matter what. And we don't have a kind of close relationship with her to make her potentially reconsider, you know, staying in Japan this time. Even on the Emmy route, this whole thing happens. Lily just had a birthday party for Hanako alone. Lily left for Inverness alone, leaving Hanako alone. She came back and at some point left again to live in Scotland forever. Leaving Hanako all alone without uh, a friend this time. And when you get a line like, uh, you know, you make it sound as if I won't be coming back. It's because you're not going to come back. I mean, you'll come back briefly, but then you're gone forever out of Hanako's life. Away from everything you knew. This though, it feels like it's almost a mistake for me to have played Lily's route first. Because now it's like, alright, we're going through this with another girl, but then we got all these other problems. And actually, thinking about it, going back to Emmy, she's, at this moment, she's not opening up to anybody, so... 
She still trusts no one enough to tell them anything, so she's still very, you know, keeping everything in, constantly having nightmares, and not wanting to worry about it. Not tell anyone anything, get close to anyone, because still in Emmy's mind, what's the point? It's just all those little things. You play through other routes, then you go to another one, you maybe sort of forget things that happen in the other routes. Like, wait, if we aren't there, th some of these things are still going to happen. Only this time there isn't someone there to potentially, you know, support them, help them in some way. So it's kind of bittersweet. You make a connection with one, only to leave the others to their own devices, which, I mean, that is life. But, I don't know. You almost just kind of want to make them all happy all, all at once. Give them all the perfect ending they deserve. Sorry, I'm being weird. Probably overanalyzing that. But that's just something that's going to be in the back of my mind forever. That's one relief, at least. With that in mind, what do you suggest, then? Given the circumstances, I don't think karaoke is really appropriate. You're not... You're not going away for the greatest of reasons, so having too much fun would feel wrong. What did you do for her birthday last year? Last year, I literally couldn't get her out of her room. She'd locked the door. All I could do was leave food outside for her, making sure she was at least eating well. This is perhaps the most depressed I've ever seen and heard Lily act. I feel sorry for her, given how defeated she must feel to be unable to help her closest friend. Perhaps it would be better to throw the party before you leave, then. That does sound like you'd be the easiest option. I think we should at least tell Hanako, both about your trip and her party. I have her things from her class as well. That's a good point. Should we go and visit her now? I... I think that'd be a good idea. Part of me is dying to see Hanako. The last time I saw her, she looked like death walking. And these last few hours have torn me apart just thinking about that. We quietly get up and file out of Lily's room. Hanako's room is next door in the same hallway. Knocking lightly gets us no response, but the door proves to be unlocked. Lily pauses for a moment as the handle unexpectedly moves under her hand before opening the door. Hanako's room is startlingly bare and monotone. There's no decorations on the plain white walls. A plain dark blue blanket, and only a few books, papers, and pure utilitarian items on the shelves. Even her bed sheets are monochrome. The entire room feels as subdued as Hanako's character. Aww. Hanako herself is lying curled up on her bed. She may not be crying now, but her eyes are closed tight, tightly to stop herself, and the tracks left by her tears still sit on her reddened cheeks. I quietly walk in and set her bag down on her desk, afraid of startling her too much. Hello, Hanako. Has Sao told me what happened today? Are you all right? Hanako's eyes open, Though only a little. I'm... I'm okay. 
She tilts her head slightly to look at me, noticing my grimacing before I can hide it. Sorry. For making you worry. Really. I'm fine now. She really doesn't look nor sound okay. Though at least she seems more calm than she was before. She still looks as if the slightest breath could emotionally break her. I said it before, right? You don't need to be sorry for this. Miss Howe's right. We... I... shouldn't have hidden something like a birthday celebration from you. I see Hanako shiver at the word. Lily picks up on the silence that follows and crouches down to Hanako's level. I'm the one who should be sorry, Hanako. Hanako's eyes open to peer at Lily. She looks at Lily for some time, taking in her face with those dark, analytical eyes of hers. Lily must have made the right impression on her as Hanako recovers enough to prop herself up on the bed and shift to sitting on its side. Hanako worries me about many things, but troubling others is foremost among them. Hanako worries about, not Hanako's worries me about, whatever. Hanako worries about things, but troubling others is like the first thing she always worries about. That's, yeah, that's, oh my god. Oh my god. She has her own issues, but she doesn't want other people worrying about them. She doesn't want to worry people with her own worrying, because that only makes her worry more. Oh my god. God damn it, Hanako. Hearing Hanako shuffling, Lily moves forward and feels out the side of the bed eventually taking a seat beside her and taking Hanako's left hand with both of hers. The feeling of me being out of place when the two are together has lessened in the time we've known each other, but it's still occasionally very much there. This is one of those times, I think. Lily, if you want me to go... I, I don't want that. Lily and I are both surprised at Hanako mut mustering her courage. A half-mumbled okay is all I can give her in reply, and I take her desk chair to sit in. Hanako, I am afraid I have some bad news. So, Lily's gonna break the news now. With Hanako having affirmed our relationship so clearly, Perhaps Lily thought the timing was good, or at least as good as it will ever be. My aunt has fallen ill, so I need to return to my family for a time. Concern replaces Hanako's remorseful expression. Your... family. You mean in Scotland, right? That's right. Akira and I will be leaving Saturday. So you're going away? I won't be gone for long. Probably only a week or two. I'll be back before you know it. And Hisao will be here, right? That's right. I'm not going anywhere. Aniko seems to only take minor comfort in this. But she does manage to summon some resolve from inside her, from somewhere inside her. Is your aunt gonna be alright? I'm not sure. Silence falls. It's depressing that the thing to truly bring Hanako out of her rut is another's misfortune. 
I decided to bring up the other matter that brought us here. To distract, at least in part, from the dismal feeling permeating the room. Anyway, we were thinking it would be a good idea to have a going away party for Lily. And it could double as... Yeah. Well, bitrate's starting to go a little wonky, but I think uh, it's holding well enough. To check on this end, aka my end. Yeah, that's good enough. For now. Until it really starts going to absolute crap. cut myself off before mentioning her birthday, as that seems to be a trigger for such fierce emotions within her. Okay, go to my end. Mostly. Lily gives Hanako's hand a gentle squeeze. Is it alright by you, Hanako? It won't be anything lavish or overdone. Just something small in my room. So, just in the school? Just us? That's right. Just the three of us. If you'd like, I could ask Akira to come as well. Oh. Okay. Y you're only going for a week? One week or two, yes. I promise you, it won't be any longer. Okay. Most people would be upset at hearing about a friend's family member falling ill and have and happy at having a party. But with Hanako, it seems that both events are on the same level. Alright then. You look like you need a rest, Hanako, so it might be best if we all went back to our rooms for now. You know that if you ever want anything, you can always talk to Mir Hassel, right? Lily's voice is pensive, with an unusual edge for someone so confident in herself as she. I... understand. Thank you, Lily. Hassel. Well then, good night, Hanako. Night. I let out a long breath after the door closes behind us. It feels a little like we've been deep underwater, and only now have we been able to come up for air. Oh, bit rate's back to normal, good. Lily doesn't seem to be doing well either. She looks pale and drawn. Are you alright? I'm just a little tired. It's been... hectic recently. Have you slept at all? A little tired sounds like an understatement given how you look. I think I managed to get a couple of hours of sleep before class. I'll be okay. Uh, this is another, like, kind of a thing from Lily's route, how she doesn't want... She also doesn't want anyone to worry about her. Like she keep, tries to keep up this facade of being strong and supportive of others. She doesn't want to look weak. So that's still a thing. She's still going to be keeping up a facade for like the rest of her life. I feel bad about pressing Lily right now. I think both of us are pretty tired from everything that's happened as well. I think it should get some rest. It's been a big day, and staying up isn't good for your complexion. Thank you for your concern, Hassel. Good night, then. Okay. Night, Lily. 
I leave Lily in the hallway as she opens the door to her room and begin to make my way to my own. As I walk down the quiet hallway, I can't get that image of Hanako out of my mind. Huddled and pitiable, lying helpless with tears on her cheeks. I begin to think that she was I began to think she was ju just a normal, if extremely shy person. But her troubles run much deeper. Trying to take our relationship further than what we share now, when she's so fragile and vulnerable, wouldn't be right. I don't need to be more than her friend in order to protect her, to try and stop anything like this ever happening again. The possibility of my feelings for her going beyond that... That doesn't matter anymore. Hanako is precious to me. That's why I can't take advantage of her. But even so, there's still that sting I feel when I think that way. For now, I need to sleep. Tomorrow, hopefully, will be a better day. Hanako is more noticeable in her absence than when she's in the room. I feel her empty desk calling out for me. I find myself peering over my shoulder endlessly, hoping that I'm hallucinating and that Hanako will magically appear. She makes sure she's, a, she's as small a presence as possible when she attends class. And although she's been getting better recently, that fact never changed. Nobody ever pays her any heed in class, and now that she's not here, they don't notice her absence. It's as if she just never existed. Lily did say that her skipping class wasn't an unusual thing before I met her, but it's still very off-putting. The bells heralding the end of school make me jump in my seat. It's only now that I notice Misha is prodding me in the side with her mechanical pencil to get my attention. Hello? Is anybody in there? Hey, stop that. Ah, there we are. Welcome back to Earth, He-Chan. What are you talking about? You kept on dazing off into space. I was beginning to think you might try to contact alien life. I really didn't get much sleep last night, so I don't doubt Misha's words. I'm not sure whether it's due to my medicine side effects, Hanako's panic attack yesterday, my worrying about her in general, or all three. I yawned tiredly before resting my chin in my palm, having been reminded of how badly I slept. Hey, are you really alright? Yesterday kind of rattled me as well. Yeah, yeah, I guess. I wanted to speak to Hanako again, though. Did you see her last night? Yeah, Lily and I talked to her. Um, this may sound a bit weird. Can you tell she's in a thank you from both me and Lily? I know Lily technically didn't thank she's in a, but I could tell by her reaction last night that she wanted to. At least that's how it works out in my head. Uh, I think what Shi Chan is trying to say is. You're welcome. The furious signing and Shizune's reddened cheeks tell me that what she said was entirely different. Her blatantly flustered expression is amusing enough to make me chuckle. What's so funny, He-Chan? Was it something we said? No, no, that's not it. I was simply thinking about how cute Shizune can be at, be at times. Oh 
Oh my god. There we go. Got a little bit of comedy to break up that somber beginning. Insert wahaha here. You're right! Shi-chan really is really cute when she tries not to be. I notice that Misha decides not to sign her response to Shizune. Maybe Shizune's rage is enough to enough of a counter to any quantity of cute. Nevertheless, Shizune quickly calms down and signs something else to Misha. Oh? Okay. He-chan, Shi-chan wants you to come and have dinner with us. Dinner? Eh? Why did I say eh? It's just dinner, eh? I don't know. Whatever. Ugh, this flip-flopping of emotions is kind of screwing me up. I was also very thirsty. Turning away from them a bit, lest I be swayed by their pleading smiles, I begin to mull it over. The invitation certainly is tempting. A takeaway dinner with two cute girls is not a bad thing, after all. The thought of Hanako locked up in her room, though, keeps dancing on the edge of my mind. Sorry, I'll have to pass. Ah. Misha doesn't sign my response, but Shizune picks up on it easily enough and grimaces in disappointment. She moves her arms, assumedly beginning some form of either protest or coercion, but stops herself and taps Misha sh Misha's shoulder twice. Once Misha gives Shizune her attention, the only statement Shizune has on the matter is a shrug. Well, it's your choice, he chan I promise I'll join you two another time, if that helps. Misha perks up at this, but Shizune doesn't share her reaction. With a flick of the head to signal for Misha to follow her away, Shizune simply raises her hand to silently wave goodbye. As the two make their way out the door, I return the gesture until they're out of sight. I didn't think they'd be so disappointed, and it makes me feel a little bad for ditching them. Still, I have things to do. The girls' dormitory is especially rowdy today, with a number of girls loudly playing games and watching television in a common room on the first floor. I can hear their voices even now, standing in front of Hanako's door. It's an odd contrast to the emptiness of the floor she's on. The voices from below make the emptiness feel all the more lonely. I had hopes Hanako would be in class today, especially after the talk Lily and I had with her last night, but I feel like I shouldn't hold it against her. It was a pretty awful episode, and to have to experience it firsthand must be all the worse. Not knowing what state she's in, I take a small breath before giving a few sharp knocks on her brown door. All I can do is stand and wait, doing my best not to feel anxious. As the seconds wear on, I begin to think she might be asleep and didn't hear me knocking. The door handle rattles a little before I, raise, I can raise my hand to knock again, though. The door opens a sliver, an eye appearing in the gap, only just large enough for it to peer through. I'm sure this girl would install a peephole in her dormitory door, if only such a thing was allowed. I just stand there and smile at her. I don't think words would really help here, after all. The act is returned in kind, with Hanako wordlessly looking at me. The gap's not wide enough to see her expression, and I can only guess what she's thinking. Time passes as we, as we look at each other, 
the only sound being the disembodied gaiety from the ground floor. I'm not sure how long it takes, but eventually the eye moves away. I keep wondering whether she'll let me in or shut me out until the door slowly begins to creak open. Now that I have full view of her and her bedroom behind, the first thing I notice is that Hanako's hair is quite damp. She has recently showered, which is made even more obvious by the scent of shampoo wafting towards me. The look on her face seem, seems one of curiosity, as if she's not really sure what to make of me. Even so, I'm not really all that sure of what she's thinking. It feels as if she's gone away for a long time, and having now returned, neither of us knows what to say to each other. Hanago realizes she's staring looking away awkwardly before turning to the side and gazing at her feet. I decide to take it as an invitation to step past her into the room, closing the door behind me as I do so. I can see her hands fiddling in the folds of her oversized gown that hangs from her shoulders. I try to concentrate on what I want to say, but the scent from her addles my senses. To my surprise... It's not me, but Hanako that breaks the silence. Why? Because... Uh... Why did I come here? I was worried about Hanako, so I came to her room. She let me in, as I had hoped, and then... What? What did I mean to do? What did I mean to say? Why didn't I think this through before coming here? I want to make up for what I feel I caused, at least par partly. I want to try and remove the distance I feel between us since then. And to see her happy. How can I do that when I don't know the first thing about her? I wonder... I wonder if this is how Iwanako felt when she was lying, saw me lying in that sterile pastel blue hospital bed. I, uh... I... Um... A deep, a deep sigh steadies my nerves a little and ends my stammering. I don't think I've ever felt this nervous around someone before. When I'm like this, I don't think I can lie. Even if I could bring myself to, Hanako would see, r see through it right away. I don't know. I just wanted to see you, I guess. Her fingers stop moving, giving me a little surprise. Looking up to her face, she gives a sweet smile and a nod. That was a satisfactory answer for her? Um... Since you're here... I'd like to... play a game of chess with you. I almost hang my head in disbelief that, that all she wants to do, after I've been winding myself up so much, is play a game. Looking at her face, though, a tentative smile perched upon it, I realize that this is more than that. She could have not bothered answering the door. She could have shut it as soon as she saw my face. She could have asked me to leave. She could have rejected me at many points. But she didn't. Now, with this calm face, she wants me to play the same game that we've played when we first really spent time alone together. A feeling of relief washes over me. Everything will be alright. Hanako has let me into her world. As long as we can be together like this, I think everything will be alright.
This feels like I got an ending. Please don't tell me I got an ending. I'm now just gonna check. I f this feels like an ending. think so not from what I'm reading but that this feels like an ending let's just see what happens it would be my pleasure okay thank God it isn't that just felt so much like it could have just been an ending The day of Hanako's birthday party is finally here. To be honest, I'm looking forward to seeing Hanako and Lily in their pajamas again. Damn it, Hisao! God damn it. You kind of just said I can't wait to just, you know, spend more time with them. No, I can't wait to see them in their pajamas. Fucking horn dog. Go to horny jail, Jesus. Hanako's gown has grown on me as looking rather cute, though a bit conservative, and Lily's shorts and thin silken top are a lovely combination. Bruh. Stop! But the event is stained a little with the memory of Hanako's reaction to it. I still don't really understand what happened, only being able to vaguely guess the possible reasons for it. But I don't think finding the answer will be as straightforward as asking her. With that in mind, I knock on the door next to Hanako's. Is that you, Hisao? Yeah, it's me. I can hear the pitter-patter of footsteps coming to the door, followed by the sound of the lock snapping open. I don't think I've ever seen Lily's door locked before, and it makes me a little suspicious. Once the door opens, the sight is... a little underwhelming for a birthday party. Hanako returns to her seat at the table with a quick smile and a nod leaving me to close and assumingly they wanted to keep wanted to get to assuming they wanted it to be kept that way lock the door oh my god I screwed that whole line up there good job me as I do so I realize that the scene before me is that of an evening tea party just like any other between the two somehow I don't think I should be surprised to my relief, Hanako looks relatively calm. The break from class has probably done her good and given her time to wind down a bit. I take a seat between the two at the low table in the center of Lily's room, the brightly colored teapot steaming away between us. A tall brown bag close to Lily's side catches my attention. I covertly try to glance inside a couple times, but can't get a look can't get a good look from here. Looking to Hanako, it seems like she's as curious about it as I am. Hey, Lily. Lily finishes off the teacup raised to her lips before setting it down and giving me her attention. Yes. I was just wondering about that brown bag pauses for a moment, then gives a slightly cheeky smile. That would be Akira's present. 
Unfortunately, she said she was working and can't join us. Lily leans over and feels out the item inside before raising her arm. I raise an eyebrow as two items, not one, rise from the bag. The glass necks are grasped by Lily on either side of her middle finger. So this is why she had the door locked. Yeah, this time Lily's not like, What are you doing, Akira? Why would you bring wine? We're too young to have wine. Why would you bring wine? This time she's like, Bottoms up, bitches. <laughs> Secret slumber party wine. And uh, no, more like secret uh, birthday wine. <laughs> hey, Jen, how's it going? Just in time for the f uh, Hanako's birthday party. You just missed uh, her post uh, panic attack scenes. Which is, that was not really the greatest thing to go through. You're doing good? Good. There are two small thuds as the bottles are brought to rest on the table. One red, one white. I want to believe that it's fake, non-alcoholic wine, but if it was, there wouldn't be any need for this... circumspect. Okay, that's a new word for me. Alcohol? Seriously? Are you sure this is a good idea? Lily smiles politely and giggles. I'm not really convinced that she is. These would be presents from my sister. I know it's a bit questionable, but a little shouldn't hurt. You guys are gonna finish both goddamn bottles. I know it. If Lily took serious issue with it, I don't think she'd have agreed quite so easily. That aside, I had Akira squared as the serious and responsible type. Maybe like an older Lily. But it looks like I was wrong. We aren't even legally able to drink yet. You know what Hasao needs? Some laxatives to loosen the fuck up! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Well, in that case, I won't complain. They don't look bad, either. I'm no connoisseur, but at least the bottles look nice. Apart from a surreptitious glass of wine or two given from my father at family dinners, I haven't really had enough to know what's what. that, and I can't really say I'm a total straight edge. Going by Hanko's expression, expression, she's thinking the same, and it's her birthday anyway. Shall I open one? Sure, I'll get some- My heart skips as I hear three sharp bangs coming from Lily's door. Hanako's head flicks around and Lily's eyes close as she listens, in listens intently. None of us want to be busted for this. Who is it? Let me in! I'm cold! Lily lets out a resigned sigh before motioning for Hanako to open the door. She obediently gets up and fusses with her gown before moving. Apparently, still not quite sure of who it is, but trusting enough in Lily to do as she requests. I can just see a blonde, dark-suited figure become visible over Hanako's shoulder as she opens the door. Yeah, I wonder who this blonde, black-suited person is. Happy birthday, Hanako! Th 
thank you, Akira. Hanako gives a small bow while twiddling her fingers in front of her. So this is Lily's elusive sister. Akira follows Hanako to the table after shutting the door behind her. Giving me plenty of time to have a good look at her. Are you going to perv on the sister now too? Just before this, when he's walking to the door for this party, he says, Ah, uh, yeah, I can't wait to see the two in their pajamas again. Not even, I can't wait to spend time with them or see how Hanako's doing. No, it's, I can't wait to see them in their pajamas. Fucking Nassau. He's like a major pervert in this route for some reason. I don't understand it. <laughs> He's way too much of a perv. She looks to be about the same height as Hanako and has short blonde hair that's quite roughly cut. That, in addition to her rather modest breasts, masculine suit, and deep voice, gives her quite an androgynous effect. Without further ado, she plops herself down on the side of the table across from me. It's nice to have your company after all, Akira. Did work let you off? Yes, Akira is Lily's sister. It's her older sister. We saw her in the Lily route a uh, fair amount of times. She works in a law office, I'm pretty sure. You always thought that was a boy? Yeah, um, I think actually in early drafts, Akira was supposed to be a, the brother. But then they just changed it to, it's actually Lily's sister. But they kind of kept the androgynous look. Or at least the masculinist look, so yeah. She, Akira looks androgynous, that's all. I mean, she also hangs out with uh, Hideaki. You know, she's an ace brother who dresses more like a girl than a boy. Yep. I have to go back there in a bit, but I managed to get enough of a break to drive down. So, this would be Hasao then. A confident smile gets thrown in my direction, so I nod politely in return. Considering she just jumped straight to using my first name, she is much more informal than her appearance would suggest. Wait, if she already knows who I am, then that must, me that must mean that Lily's talked about me with her. I wonder what she said. Oh, probably saying... Probably just probably saying some weird shit like... Oh, I don't know, um... Hmm. He may not think I know, but I'm quite, quite well aware he looks down my shirt at every possible moment. <laughs> it's like, oh my god, one of the, fir the first tea party we came to, we looked down her shirt because he's a fucking pervert! I also get him to try Hanako's cooking before I eat. That way, if he drops dead, I'll know if I should eat it or not. <laughs> I mean, that is something I clipped that happened, I think, the, was it last time or the stream before. Yeah, sh we'd make note that she didn't start eating what Hanako made until after we started and said, yeah, it's good. <laughs> yeah, I've kind of turned Lily into a bit of a joke for this route. <laughs> Sorry for not introducing you, Hisao. This is Akira Sato, my eldest sister. I see. 
nice to meet you. The person in question loudly claps her hands together, making Hanako jump a little bit. Akira notices this and looks uneasy for a fraction of a second before getting back into her stride. Only now do I realize that Akira hasn't paid Hanako's scar scars any undue attention. Hanako also seems to be comfortable, if not exactly relaxed, around Akira. Well then, I assume the presents got through? No point in waiting, considering Hisao and the birthday girl look like they're pretty eager. Lily giggles as I awkwardly turn away, a little embarrassed by the fact that I couldn't hide my interest. Hanako's eyes are telling me that she wants to try the wine together with me, though, so I settle for a look of badly feigned indifference. Akira manages to uncork the first bottle with small effort, and Hanako goes to get some glasses before I get to pour the four of them, f four of them full of white wine. I feel like I read that terribly. I always read my lines terribly. Go me. <laughs> I heard somewhere that white wine has less alcohol than red wine, so I think it would be so I think it would be best to start with. Here's to Hanako and to Lily's trip. Yes, here here to Lily going to Scotland to visit her dying aunt. Quite a thing to toast about. Once again, that's still a thing. She's still going to Scotland to visit her sick aunt. I did mention it a lot earlier near the beginning of the stream when she brought that up, but yeah, that's all still happening. She's still going away for two weeks to see her aunt, so going by that logical conclusion, when she comes back, she'll eventually be leaving again to go to Scotland forever. Only doubt there's no relationship with uh, Hisao to make her actually consider reconsidering that. But it is what it is. Cheers! Cheers! Ah, yeah, that's fucking sucked. Oh well. You want cringe voice acting? You're looking at it right here. I'm cringe voice actor supreme, apparently. <laughs> Cheers. After the traditional raising of the glasses, we all take sips of the pale yellow liquid. It's nothing like the stuff I've had with my parents, with the fruitiness of the flavor almost entirely hiding the taste of alcohol. That's how they get you. That's how you can get really fucked up on wine. Because you're not tasting the alcohol. Maybe this is what proper wine is supposed to taste like. Then again, it's possible that Akira just chose a wine that would be suited to our tastes, since none of us are used to alcohol yet. Or at least, I hope none of us are. Yeah, I'm sure Lily gets crunk every night. <laughs> this isn't too bad. I was expecting something... harsher. If you hadn't liked it, I have a few other varieties you could have chosen from. You sound like you know your stuff when it comes to wines. Only a bit. I'm more of a beer kind of person. I have the drinking side down pat, though. As if to prove her point, she refills her glass before bringing it to her lips and flicking her head back. Alright, she's doing wine shots now. Hanako, Hanako and I silently watch as the whole glassful disappears down Akira's throat. I can't decide whether to be impressed or put off, but I certainly don't have any urge to imitate the act. Yeah, you just do that, right? Pour a glass of wine, then just go... done. Lily grimaces slightly at her sister's boast. I note that she's sipping from her glass as she does so, though. Anyway, 
Now that Akira's gift has been opened and sampled, shall we move on to ours? Gifts? That's right. We got you presents. It's your birthday, after all. This is from me. Lily pulls out the carefully wrapped doll from under the table and passes it to Hanako. Hanako handles the present as if it was glassware, carefully turning it over to remove the tape that binds the wrappings. Eventually, the paper falls from the doll, revealing the emerald green of the doll's dress. It's... beautiful. I'm not sure what reaction I was expecting from Hanako. The near total lack of dolls in her room made me think that she didn't care about them. But the look in her eyes now is something different. She turns the doll around with the same delicacy she afforded the wrapping, as if she was expecting it to, expecting it to fall apart in her hands. I'm glad that you like it. Misao picked it out, to be honest. Hanako suddenly remembers that she's not alone in the room and shifts her focus from the doll. Yes, I like it. Thank you, Lily and Misao. Actually, I got you something else. I reach into my bag and remove the wrapped chess set. Here. Happy birthday. Hanako carefully sits Lily's doll next to her and opens my present with the same care that she showed Lily's. Before long, the checkered squares of the chessboard are visible, and Hanako gently runs her fingers along the carved surfaces. Oh! Almost by accident, she triggers the catch on the lid, startling herself in the process. She opens it and retrieves one of the gray pieces. She seems as absorbed in the chess pieces as she was in the doll before. They're coral. Natural coral, undyed. Or so I'm told. Thank you, Sal. No problem. It's your birthday, after all. Second, folks, just gonna take care of something. Sorry about that. That's right. My birthday. Once again, Hanako's reaction seems a little off, but she carefully closes the, ch the board lid. I notice Akira smile. Akira's smile beginning to look very strained. I wonder if she knows anything about what happened in class, given that she seems to be treading on eggshells around Hanako. I'll have to play you again sometime. I'll... make sure I'll play you first. We did get this same CG back in, uh, the... 
lily route, but she was holding different things. Like, she had a different doll in her hands, and I think, and I forget what the heck, uh, Lily got her. But yeah, they just changed that up a bit. Also, as he pointed out back when we bought the doll last stream, it did, the doll did look a lot like Lily. <laughs> so it's like she's got a little mini Lily with her now. She takes the doll she received from Lily and holds it to her chest, together with the small chessboard, putting the piece on top. The act seems to settle her down somewhat, and we just sit in silence for a while. I think it's one of the few times I've seen her genuinely happy, cradling the friendship of two people to her chest as tightly as she can. Thank you, Lily. Thank you, Hsiao. In the process of thanking us, Hanako drops the chess piece and fumbles a bit in her rush to retrieve it. Once she finds it, Hanako puts the chess set down and nervously gulps at her wine. It's as if the real world suddenly rushed back into her consciousness and her fastest escape from it was in a glass. Easy. Hey, easy there. I shouldn't drink it that fast. It's a party, Sal. Despite saying this, there's a slightly concerned edge to her voice. Eventually, acquiescing, Lily proceeds to follow Hanako's lead, though not as eagerly. She looks to be taking small sips from her glass and letting the wine settle on her tongue before swallowing. I decide this is probably the best approach and do the same myself. I don't know how you drink wine. I don't drink wine. I don't like the taste. Since this is kind of a going away party for you as well, I hope you enjoy your trip a little, at least a little, Lily. Hopefully your aunt will be okay. I, I hope your aunt is okay too, Lily. Lily and I are slightly taken aback by Hanako's fervor to wish Lily well, despite her own familial situation. I'm a little impressed. My, my. Thank you both. I'll be sure to convey your thoughts to my family when I meet them. Yeah, I'll be fine in the end, Lily. Don't worry about it. Since the room's mood has become noticeably more sullen, I decide to try and move things along. Well then, shall we start on the cake? My tentative suggestion has the intended effect, everyone lighten lightening up considerably. Yes, please. Cake? I didn't know there was any cake. I picked one up before I came, along with some snacks. Wow, we actually bought a cake. I think Lily provided the cake last in her route, so good thinking on our part, I guess. Granted, Lily also spent $200 on that doll when we haggled down to 55 bucks for a chess set. Well done, Sal. At least one of us remembered to bring one. Everyone seems to welcome the distraction, so I retrieve the cake from my bag and start cutting it up. Mixing wine and chocolate cake isn't something that I thought would work well, but none of us seem to mind. Conversation is temporarily suspended as we start to eat. I was initially wary of this idea, after Hanako's panic attack, I expected the worst from tonight. But I think Lily's idea of having her good memories of her birthday is working. Of, of giving her good memories of her birthday is working. Oh my god. Uh, I'll never read lines properly. Let's just say that right now. Never. <laughs> I will always screw it up somehow. 
<laughs> that, and also having it shared with her going away party. From Hanako's reaction to her gifts, I can tell she was really appreciative. Hanako tries to pour herself another glass of wine, but ends up spilling some of it on the table. She's had a couple by now, so considering that she's never had alcohol before, it's no wonder if she's feeling a bit lightheaded. Yeah, nice, we got Hanako drunk. <laughs> or she got herself drunk. Sorry, Lily. I didn't mean to make a mess. I... Don't worry, I got it. Lily reaches sideways and gently takes the fussing Hanako in her arms, giving me pause. It's okay, Hanako. I'm just happy you're here. Hanako gives only a faint nod in response. It's fitting, I suppose, that Lily would be the one to support her like this. I have no idea what Hanako would be like if she hadn't. She would just kind of lock herself away in her room most of the time. sad to think about, but she's managed to get that far in a while. She's only known Lily for like a year. Seeing the two like this makes me appreciate the fact that I'm privy to such an intimate moment. Even Akira can't help but smile at the sight. I never would have thought I'd managed to find new friends so quickly. And I'm all the more thankful that, of all people, these two are the two I befriended. Well, you don't want to make friends with uh, Misha and Shizune. Join the student council. Have the rest of a school budget spent on cake only for them. I'm not going to get over that. That's something that happened. They, they straight up mentioned that they're using the rest of the school budget to buy cake. For themselves. Legit how schools work, you would know. <laughs> it's like, yeah, the only two members of the student council will take whatever's left of a school budget and buy cake for themselves and only themselves. Like, are you kidding? I'm, n I'm never going to get over that. You're just spending the school's money on fucking cake. Ugh. slowly break off from one another, Hanako regaining herself somewhat while I quickly get myself back on task. I find a towel among Lily's tea set and start mopping up the spillage. By the time I finish, however, Hanako and Lily have managed to uncork the other bottle and have topped off their glasses. Oh my god. <laughs> Looks like you're enjoying the wine then. Just don't go too crazy with it after this, mind. We all dutifully nod and agree, but her reminder feels a bit silly given that she's the one supplying underage people with alcohol. <laughs> oh, that look on Hanako's face, I love it. second glass of wine goes down a lot quicker than the first, and before any of us notice, the second bottle is empty. While Akira is helping us finish them off, Hanako looks to be almost equaling her in the amount she's had. Oh my god, no. No! <laughs> no, you do not do that. You do not try to keep pace with someone who's used to drinking booze. Oh my god, Hanako, you're gonna feel like absolute shit in the morning. <laughs> what have you done? What have you done to yourself? Happy 18th birthday, pukes in her frickin' garbage can.
My head feels a little light, but I think I've managed to gauge my own tolerance surprisingly well. Hanako smiles lazily, toying with her doll's hair. I think it's a pretty safe bet that she... hasn't moderated herself as well as I. I don't think it was Hanako's intention to get this drunk, but it seems the alcohol hit her all at once. She has a very light frame, something which wouldn't help her handle booze well either. Lily cradles her glass, running a finger around the rim. Her cheeks are rosy, but she's managing to avoid looking woefully drunk. Akira is, as I somewhat expected, largely unaffected. Her smile might be a little wider than before, though. Maybe. Oh my god, now she's hiccuping. Jesus Christ! <laughs> Hanako suddenly hiccups and accidentally knocks over the doll. <laughs> oh my god. I... I think I should maybe go to bed. Thank you, Sal. Thanks, Lily. And, uh, Kira. She slurs Akira's name pretty hard, barely avoiding breaking out into a giggle midway through. She's completely plastered, and I can't decide whether I should feel a little bad or not for being amused at the state she's in. It really is bizarre to see her acting so carefree. A shame that it's only with the help of alcohol. Here, let me give you a hand. Akira begins to get up to help Hanako out, but she stopped when Lily gives a sharp cough. Miss Sal, would you please? Akira looks a little surprised, and I have to admit that I am as well. I don't mind the request at all, let alone when it's said with such a smile. It just comes rather unexpectedly. Sh sure. No problem. <laughs> God damn it. I pick up the chess set and help Hanako stand up. I do feel somewhat responsible for her, considering that, other than Akira, I'm probably the most sober person in the room. She nurses the doll in one hand and offers me the other. We stumble out of the door, into the hallway, and into Hanako's room. Hanako bumping into me a number of times on the way. Oh my god, you're just literally going to the next door. Literally next door, and she's <laughs> bumping into you going nuts. Oh my god. You're going to feel terrible. Oh, I feel so bad for you. <laughs> Inside the room, I flick on the light as Hanako turns her attention toward a shelf on her dresser. An elegant doll is sitting on it, staring into the bare room. There you go. You'll be safe in here. Hanako gingerly places the doll next to the other one and straightens its dress. They sit in silence, hair and clothes perfectly, perfectly arranged. Just like the teapot in Lily's room, they serve as a distinct contrast to the dull whites and grays that permeate her bedroom. Satisfied that her dolls, her, o her only two real possessions, are safe, Hanako takes a step back and stands up, staggering severely. I step forward to catch her if need be, but she regains her balance without my help. For a while, both of us stand in silence as Hanako looks downwards toward the cupboard. Well, internet's going a little wonky right now, but I think it's holding steady enough to be coming through clear. I think. Does it look okay? Is it not looking like, you know how it was that one time, I think a week or two ago. 
Now it's starting to fix itself. Slowly. I think I'm stable near the moment. Oh yeah, we're good. We are solid. After a minute or two, she begins to sway a little from side to side. It's very off-putting. Are you going to be all right? Hanako raises her head and turns around to me as if she's only just remembered that I'm also in the room. What's unexpected is that she takes two steps forward, for two steps forward, two steps towards me. Where am I getting forward from? <sighs> What's unexpected is that she takes two steps towards me and wraps her arms around my body, her head coming to rest against my chest. I can feel my heart beating as all of my senses feel like they're coming alive again after their deadening through the previous drinking. The smell of wine on her breath, the feeling of her fingers through my clothing, the scent of her hair underneath my chin. My hands remain out in front of me, not daring to touch her. The temptation is there to hug her, to embrace her, to tell her everything will be fine, this feels wrong. Really, really wrong. Hanako. But I want to stay with you and Lily. Hanako's slurring reminds me a bit of Misha. She probably wouldn't be pleased to hear that. You know I can't. You're a girl, and I'm a guy after all, and Lily needs to sleep. She gives a disappointed groan. It's so strange for her to act so forward. Don't worry. I'll see you again tomorrow, okay? I decide to rest a hand on her head to reassure her, deciding this is, a, this is as far as I'll allow myself to go in terms of physical contact with her while she's in this state. Hanako's head nuzzles against my chest. It makes me feel all the more uneasy with the situation, and as her arms tighten around my back, I quickly decide to bail out. I rest my hands on her shoulders and give a firm but gentle push. Her grip tightens a little as I do so, but she eventually breaks off. I don't want you to go. Hanako, please. Kira and Lily are going to start thinking weird stuff if I take too long here. It's perfectly true, too. I really don't want to take any chances, and I feel very uncomfortable right now. I shouldn't try to read anything into the way she's acting right now. I read that aside from alcohol lowering inhibitions, people can react to getting drunk in very, in many different ways that don't necessarily reflect reality. And even without that, there are plenty of ways to interpret what she's saying. As long as she's safe, I'm going to try and get out of the room as soon as possible. Hanako hiccups again looking a right mess as she stands and looks downcast in the center of the room. Her personality changed as she drank more and more, and now, all alone in her room with me, her previous brightness seems to have left her. Was she just acting upbeat to make sure we didn't worry? Even if she was, what could I possibly do for her since I do exactly the same in regards to my own condition? Distancing myself from my thoughts, I eventually managed to corral Hanako towards her bed, though her attempts to tame the wild sheets on it end up accomplishing little. 
sorry about tonight, Hanako. I know you probably won't remember any of this, but... Happy birthday. I'm sorry I couldn't do more for you. She looks up at me for a moment. I have no idea if what I said actually got through to her, but any chance to ask is lost as her eyes peacefully close. I sigh in relief before quietly backing away from her and leaving the room, flicking the light switch off as I go. I hesitate a little before opening the door to Lily's room again, quickly rehearsing what I should say if I get questioned about Hanako. After a few seconds, I still can't come up with anything. I open the door and make sure to close it behind me, lest any passing students catch a glimpse of the wine before turning my attention to the two girls at the low table. Akira is casually smiling, as is Lily. I welcome the change from the mood in Hanako's room. Is that you, Hisao? Yeah, I got Hanako to, to her bed. She's sleeping now. That's good. I have to admit, I hadn't thought she'd drink quite so much. Hey, it's fine. She's all safe and tuckered up in bed now. With the way she wa she is. She awkwardly trails off, though Lily and I would hardly protest. For someone so anxious and fearful, drinking would give an easy out for those constant feelings. I wish I could do more for her. I feel useless. Looking at Lily, I think back to what I asked myself in town. My relationship with her is that of a friend, and has only ever felt that way, but now I think I know why. Lily's been there for both Hanako and me since I first met her, but she's like that for everyone, trying to do her best to make them feel better. With that in mind, then what's the bond between me and Hanako? After rescuing our relationship following the panic attack I inadvertently triggered during class, I feel like we're back to being friends, but she's on my mind more and more. I can't say I view any other girl in quite the same way, but maybe it's just a normal reaction to someone acting like this. Say, Akira. She yawns before looking at me. It is getting pretty late. You know about what happened with Hanako, don't you? Yeah, Lily told me. I negotiated pretty hard for a break so I can come down and help her help make her birthday a bit brighter. We get along pretty well. It's surprising to hear that from someone as extroverted as her, but if Hanako came to know her through Lily, maybe she had time to get used to Akira. And on that note, I had better get going. I'm already going to be a bit late as it is. But it's already so late. Sorry. Got a bunch of work dropped off dropped on us, so it overtime it is. She levers herself up with a grunt and heads past me towards the door. Just before she leaves, she turns back towards us. You haven't forgotten about the time for the flight and all the rest? Don't worry. I have everything ready. It's just a matter of packing when it gets closer to the time to leave. Atta girl. I'll see you guys later then. And with that, she disappears through the door with her hand held high in farewell. Your sister is... something, alright. I probably should have thought that comment through before saying it. Regardless, Lily seems quite amused at my appraisal. You okay after all that drinking? Not wasted and just hiding it well? I assure you. I'm quite alright. I can moderate myself. 
You seem quite self-possessed as well, if I do say so myself. Yeah, well, I guess your moderation applies to me as well. With a little hesitation, I take a seat at the table in front of Lily. I want to address this directly, and for no other reason than to settle my own thoughts. I've been meaning to ask this, but it took me a while to make up my mind. Do you have any idea what triggered that panic attack? I gathered it was something to do with her birthday, but I don't know anything more. Even Akira was being really careful around her, so I assume she knows her as well. Or she knows as well. Lily's smile drops. The gaiety of the birthday party now well and truly over. To be honest, I'm not sure of all the details myself. Hanako told you that she was in a house fire. She told me as much, and after we met, we spent a lot of time together. Other than that, she quite simply never told me. She never told you. Assuming the worst, what does she have to look back upon? A life of isolation and possibly even the death of her family? Maybe even going as far as blaming her existence for their deaths? Ooh. Even thinking about what little I know of Hanako's past is bleak. To have lived through all of that, and to live on with those memories, must be infinitely worse. Lily looks similarly depressed, but I can see her rebuild at least some of her composure before my eyes. I get the feeling that both of us are talking more frankly than we might otherwise do thanks to the wine. But it feels l like just talking this out is a good thing anyway. I feel kind of helpless about it. When it's put like that, what can I possibly do for her? I'm not wholly sure I should tell you this, but Hanako told me that you visited her the day before we both went to check on her. I must admit that I did not predict she would take such a step so quickly after what happened, nor did I expect you to. I think it was a nice gesture on your part. It wasn't much, really. It's just... At times like this... I sometimes think it would be better if we never had to leave Yamaku, or at least this town. Things are so much easier without others around. I didn't expect Lily to look quite so troubled at what I say, and for a while she looks lost in thought. She moves to speak, but stops herself as soon as she does and rethinks. And it's a bit off-putting. I think... Tell me, do you have anything planned for Friday evening? Friday evening? No. Isn't your flight to Scotland the next day? I don't think it would be a good idea to tire yourself out before you even get there. I'll be alright. You needn't worry about me. I do this tomorrow evening, but I imagine Hanako will be feeling rather off for a while. The thought of how she's going to be tomorrow makes me grimace. Maybe we should count our blessings that she didn't end up simply throwing up from drinking so much while having such a low tolerance. Well, I'm going to be able to attend whatever you're planning. What is it? Nothing unusual, I assure you. Just a little excursion. And you'd better be off, Asao. I can't imagine it's long at all until curfew is here. Oh, damn, curfew! I'd completely forgotten. I look at the clock next to Lily's bed, but it seems to be oddly without. It seems to be some oddity without written numerals, which I suppose makes sense given Lily's condition. Not wanting to risk a haughty security patrol giving me a scolding, 
I get up and decide to go to my dorm, as she says. Well then, I guess I'll see you and Hanako tomorrow, assuming that both of you managed to get up in the morning. Thank you for your concern, Hisao. Until then. With that, I make my way out of her door and into the hallway. I hope her idea will be a good one. hammering of a fist against the door feels like a nail being pounded into my head. Once, twice, three times, I let a long, annoyed breath and bear it while pressing my eyelids shut, fervently hoping for whoever it is to just go away. I feel pretty damn awful. My face feels like it's cast out of lead, my arms feel heavy, and I feel very queasy. Knees weak, arms heavy, all over the floor, mom's spaghetti. <laughs> it's been like this since I woke up half an hour ago, and I can't summon the energy to pick myself up out of bed. So, this is what they call a hangover. I wonder if perhaps this is the best treatment for teenagers who desperately want to try drinking as a way to feel like an adult. Considering how unpleasant this is, it's not something I want to repeat. A series of thumps rings out again, reverberating around the small room. I wish they'd just give up already. I have no intention of getting out of bed for them. Seconds pass turning to minutes. Since no more knocks are coming from the door, whoever it is must have left. Thank goodness. Looking to my clock, the time when I really should think about getting dressed and ready for class is approaching. I don't think I can manage it, though. I hate cutting class, but I don't think I'm going to be able to get much done at this rate. I can tell I look like a mess without needing to look at him in a mirror to confirm it, too. The morning rush is giving me enough time to stand outside the classroom for a little while without looking too suspicious. And I hope that Muto doesn't ask any awkward questions about my not attending school yesterday. Alright, so we just jumped ahead a day, apparently. I was sick. That much is true. It's just the reasons for it that I have to hide. Confident that I can get by with a tactical omission of certain truths, I stride into the classroom doing my best to appear normal. The instant I open the door and take a single step in, I can feel a dozen eyes looking at me. There is no way I'm imagining this. They're not even making any attempt to hide it. My eyes take a quick sweep around the classroom, and I spot Hanako. We make eye contact momentarily before she looks down and stares very hard at her desk. Did she spill the beans? Muto may be okay as far as teachers go, but underage drinking on campus is not exactly something that would be taken lightly. I look to him with some trepidation. Feeling better today? Yeah, thank you. He motions for me to take a seat, take my seat. My legs feeling like sticks as they carry me there. This is going to be a long day. As soon as the lunch bell rings, I'm on my way to Hanako's desk to ask her what's going on. Hanako, did you tell... She looks up at me and shakes her head. That's a big relief. It's just... Just... Well, hello there, He-chan. It's nice to see you again today. Oh my god, she's an A-not-that-face. 
Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Grimace and turned toward the unmistakable voice coming from behind me. That was way too upbeat a tone of voice to feel comfortable, even for Misha. Misha's happy smile is nothing out of the usual. She's an ace, though, is a very bad sign. But the one she wears has become notched into my brain as her... I have got you seven ways from Sunday, smile. So Shizune's owu face <laughs> is uh, her I've got you smile. Oh my god. I can't believe I just said owu. Oh, Christ almighty mother of god. Hi, Shizune. Misha? You, um... look happy to see me. Not feeling well yesterday, He-Chan? No, no I wasn't. But I'm feeling better now, at least. That's good to know, He-Chan! Why do I get the feeling that Shizune is leading me into a trap? You sound like you're not being completely serious. Oh no, He-Chan! We're generally pleased that you're all better now! Shizune is positively overflowing with happiness. There's only one reason why she would be like this. Oh no. In fact, we were quite worried about you. After all, you, Hanako, and Lily were all absent from class on the same day. Yep, she's got us. So thoroughly that all I can do is sigh in defeat. I guess you have your own theories about this. Could you just kind of... not tell anyone? Yeah, good luck with that, bro. <laughs> they told everyone. It's a bit late for that, He-Chan. I suppose she's right, considering the looks I got as I entered class. Still, things only seem to be at the level of vague suspicion rather than outright accusations, so we'll probably be fine. Hanako's face sinks a little further. Such a ch attention is troublesome enough for me, let alone her. Going by Shizune and Misha's reactions, I think they noticed this as well. Yeah, please, do not, you know, make her have a panic attack again! Okay, she's a very tightly wound up ball of anxiety, so get your goddamn bat of teasing away from her. The only reason we're giving you such a hard time is that you ignored us this morning. Yesterday morning? Takes a while to recollect what happened then, given the haze induced by the generally awful state I was in at the time. Oh, right, the knocking. That was you two? It was, and you left us there for ages after we'd taken all the effort of coming to your dormitory early in the morning. Sorry, I was having a... Problem with nausea? A problem with nausea. They're not buying it. I can't blame them. She's in his head drops in resignation before she reaches into her pocket. Something white and yellow can be seen sticking out a little, 
and as she pulls it out, it turns out to be an envelope with very bright decorations on it. Oh boy. Oh boy. There it is. Since she points it towards me, I duly take it. This is what we're trying to give you- so hard to give you, He-Chan! You don't check your- I tune out the sound of Misha's voice as my eyes register what's written on the envelope. Iwanako. I stare at the envelope for a moment before suddenly remembering that there are people around me. There's a very strange, somewhat invasive feeling about their their expressions. I kind of want to be alone right now. Iwanako? It's nothing. Thank you for bringing me this, you two. I should think so. After what we went through to get it to you. I step back and say my goodbyes. Misha th theatrically pouts even as I go out the door, but Shizune and Hanako remain very visibly curious about my reaction. I hope they won't interrogate me on this later. The smell of the gardens is, as always, a very pleasant sensation. Some of the most visible signs of how well-funded this school is, aside from the sheer size, are the expanse and condition of the grounds. A good number of students can be seen eating lunch, chatting, and playing on the bright green lawns. Even some of the staff is enjoying the summer here, keeping watch over the students and idly walking along the long concrete paths. I'd never seen a site like this in my home city. On excursions, maybe, but certainly never in the school or anywhere near where I lived. Even the bench I sit on is I sit on to read is warmer thanks to the summertime sun, reminding me why I haven't worn the school blazer even once yet. Oh, the frickin' letter. Considering this, the sunflowers and splashes of vibrant yellow coloring adorning the paper are quite appropriate for the time. If only the words written on it were as, were as well. Here I was, thinking I'd managed to get over her when this troublesome thing shows up. Her handwriting looks vaguely familiar at best, and only now that I see it again, I remember that she used to write in pink pen a lot. She was always very girly, for lack of a better term. But she was also quite fragile. I never knew if I liked, the a liked the, this aspect of her or not, though with the arrival of this letter, that question seems to have become largely moot. The letter begins with not much more than an update on the current on the state of things going on in her life. My old class had a good start at the school year. Many are anxious about exams that are going to be coming up in the future, etc., etc. But it ends on a very personal, if brief, note. It feels a bit like she wrote most of the letter just to try and soften the blow from the ending. I wanted to somehow express my feelings, but the right words didn't come to me. I couldn't say anything to comfort you. I am really sorry for not being able to support you when it mattered the most, even though I like you so much. At least now, finally, I can be more honest. If I could go back to those quiet days in February and March, I'd tell you not to give up on yourself. That's what I would say. Maybe you wouldn't have drifted so far away if I had just said something. I hope you've managed to get back on your feet on your own. Now that the distance between us is also physical, it also feels more final somehow. I wonder if we'll ever, if we won't meet again. Perhaps it's for the best if we don't? 
Still, if you would like to correspond with me, by all means, write me back. I'd very much like to hear about your new school and how you're doing. I wish you all the best. Sincerely, Iwanako. And so, that's that. Our relationship is over. Nice, neat, and tidy, with no ambiguity. Amb ambiguity. I hadn't held on to any illusions that I could ever begin anew. The last time she visited me, neither of us said a thing, except for one word she said as she left for the last time. Goodbye. Be that as it may, this feels more final. A capstone on an experiment that brought, that both of us tried and failed at. A loud shout draws my eyes away from the letter. It's just some students horsing around, with one, of, with one of the teachers standing nearby, coming over to talk to them. Are you okay? Oh, Yuko. We haven't seen you in a hot minute. A tentative voice comes from my side. For a moment, I assume it to be Hanako, but it's actually Yuko. Oh. Hello, Yuko. I thought you'd be in the library. She gives a cheerful smile, one quite fitting the atmosphere, and flourishes the empty wrapper of a roll in her hand. She must have someone else covering for her while she grabs something to eat. It reminds me that I haven't had anything to eat yet. I don't feel hungry, though, and skipping one lunch won't hurt. Mind if I sit here? Sure, go ahead. I quickly slide the letter back into its envelope, slipping it inside my bag propped up against the, against the side of the bench as Yuko takes a seat. She drops the wrapper into a bin beside us. Without much else to do, I lean back and take what enjoyment I can from the sun, silently reflecting on the letter. The lush lawns, the clear blue skies... Everything looks so different from the way it did back then. Even the school's surroundings, from the hill on from the hill it's on to the woods around it, are completely opposite to the urban scenery I remember. Maybe this is what it's like to feel homesick. Then again, it's not an outright bad sensation. The feeling of the area around Yamaku, while very different, is also nice. I think I could get used to it. Hey, Kasau. Yeah? You didn't answer my question from before. I wasn't going to say anything, but you still look troubled. If you don't want to say anything, though, that's okay. I don't mind at all. Um, sorry for asking something strange like that. I, I don't mind. It's just, I got a letter from someone I knew before I came to Yamaku. It made me think about some things. I thought I'd managed to get over most of the problems that my accident caused. But now I'm not really so sure. I kind of wish I'd never seen it. I don't think that's good, Hassel. When my boyfriend left me, he did so very suddenly, and I and he and never let me know why. At first, I was very depressed about it, but I decided to forgive him. You forgave him? Couldn't he at least have talked properly with you about it? He was always one of those people that found it difficult to come close to others. In the end, I decided that I fell in love with him for a reason. He was a good person, and I think if I had been in his position, I probably would have found it just as hard to try and talk to him. I don't... really see the connection to the letter I got. I mean that... Um, how should I put this? It must have been very hard for that person to send that letter. And if they did, I think they must have thought very hard about exactly what to say. 
Iwanako managed to write this letter and bring a final close to a close to our relationship. Something that I'd never managed to do. Whereas here I am, trying to protect and help Hanako as best I can, especially with Lily leaving for a while, and I'm not even able to deal with my own problems. Does that make sense? She's taken my non-response and furrowed brow as doubt. Whew. She really reads faces too much, just like a certain other person. Yeah, that makes sense. The letter was just kind of a shock, really. I think I tried to fool myself into thinking that my life reset when I came into Yamaku. But now I'm suddenly aware that it didn't. I'm a bit of... I'm at a bit of a loss about how to deal with these feelings. I think that's something I can't really help you with. Sorry. It's fine. I think being able to talk with you helped me get things sorted out a bit better in my head. So, thank you anyway. She nods and smiles sweetly. Yuko is a nice girl, so it's a shit. So it's a shame she's always she's so high strung so often. Yeah, like man, <laughs> also a big ball with anxiety. <laughs> the school bell ringing out startles us both. <laughs> ah, I was supposed to be back before the bell. Oops. She jumps off the bench and almost races off without a second word, but turns on her heel as she remembered she was talking to me just now. I'll see you later, Hisao. Cheer up, okay? I'll try to. Thanks, Yuko. With a quick bow, Yuko takes her leave and begins her rush to the library. Her flight catches the curious eyes of a few passing students who are unenthusiastically trudging back to their classes after their fun. Reluctantly, standing from the bench, I dust myself off to join and join them. Even while I walk through the gardens back to the main building, the thought of the letter in my bag doesn't stray far from my mind. Mysterious boyfriend Yuko had. He's been kind of... I think he's... At least some relationship I think she's had been brought up a few times. And other things. So we're gonna... Save that there. And I will call that a day for Kato Shoujo. Yeah, internet managed to hold out for a full two hours, which is good. We got through a lot. The post-panic uh, attack... Uh, thing with Hanako, her entire birthday, and yeah, Iwanako's letter. That's going to show up in every route. So, yeah. And again, it's somewhat been interpreted a little differently. In Lily's route, he just saw it as an abdication of responsibility. In Emmy's route, it kind of helped him put uh, his life in perspective a bit, like She's feeling the same way I did. I cur I am currently feeling with Emmy. I want to say something, but don't know what. And now with Hanako's route, Yuko helped put it into another perspective of... She had the guts to kind of send it. It takes a lot. She's trying to solve it. It's like, wait, I'm trying to help Hanako, yet I haven't figured out my own problems. It takes a strong person to send a letter like that, so everything in that letter had to have been carefully thought out. Whereas a good old Hasao, he's not thinking at all when, like, I gotta do something to help and protect Hanako when he can't solve his own shit. So yeah, same letter, same words in it, three different interpretations of it. And we still got two more routes that have it show up, so... We'll see how it ends up getting interpreted that way. Like, that's just kind of like an English teacher's dream, almost. <laughs> it's like, yeah, here's one specific thing. Interpret it. Give me your thoughts on what that means. Which is nice. 
It's not just, here is letter, here's how he feels the same in all five routes. Nah, it, it's got differences. I appreciate that. Hands are stiff. All right, so tomorrow, starting at 10, will be a Gunpla building stream. I will attempt to build the Sinanju. Sticker hell. <laughs> Again, the sticker sheet for this thing is as big as my hand. And it's for all that wonderful gold and black you see on his chest and his knees and on the shield. Uh, that's going to be fun. So that's why I'm giving myself a lot of time to do it. <laughs> Screw stickers, hand paint them. Yes, because my steady ass hands are going to be able to do that. I'm going to buy all the paints to do that. Let me paint yellow on something that is as, about as thin as my fucking hair. <laughs> yeah, no thank you. I'll stick with stickers. I mean, the worst thing I've built sticker-wise is the kit for the narrative Apex, just because the thing is gigantic and it had an individual sticker for missiles on them. I think it had a grand total of like 30 goddamn missiles I had to throw a sticker onto. So it's like one here, and then here, and here, and here. Turn it around, rinse and repeat. Ugh. Stickers are annoying, but sometimes they're a little easier than painting. <laughs> My schedule is up on Twitter now. I'll just do a very quick run-through of more or less what I'm going to do for the rest of this week. So, we already went through today. Tomorrow, like I said, Gunplus stream starting at 10. All throughout the week now, I'll be starting at 10 o'clock regardless. If that ends up changing for whatever reason, I'll try to give as much notice as I can, but if I do, I do. I don't. Unfortunately, I just don't, so just keep an eye out for those notifications. Tuesday, 10 o'clock, SD Gundam will hopefully be able to finish off the last mission of uh, Double O movie storyline. Wednesday and Thursday, we'll hop back into Doki Doki Blue Skies, finally. So I've been kind of putting that off for a little bit. Friday will be Katawa Shoujo. So I figure, why not? Let's just make Friday early in the morning, Katawa. And Saturday is going to be Stardew at 12. So for right now, I'm, 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 again, I'm planning to probably just make set weekends, potentially Stardew, just as kind of chill, relax things. I don't know. My schedule will be varying, but that's what I'm going to go for this week. So, tomorrow, Gunpla, Tuesday, Gundam, Wednesday, Thursday, Doki Doki Blue Skies, Friday, Kadawa, Saturday, Stardew. If there ends up being any changes to the game I play, I will let you know. Most of it is dependent on how my internet likes to hold up. As you know. <laughs> really have anything else to say. Yeah, I don't really have anything else going on right now. Anyhow, I hope everyone has a good rest of your Sunday. Thank you very much for anyone who watched, commented, lurked, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you next time. <laughs>